Hey everybody, it's Crow and AG here of Poke Crows. Go ahead and say hi, AG. What's up, everybody? And uh, today we're going to be talking about Pokemon Sword and Shield. I don't know if anyone's heard of this game. It hasn't really been in the uh, uh, public uh, eye, and uh, there hasn't been any any real uh, uh, media push on this. They're they're really trying to keep it hush hush and under wraps. So, um, little little known uh, franchise here, Pokemon, right? <laughs> uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of a big deal. It's kind of a big deal, especially really? this one. Really? I, I have, I have, I, I have heard absolutely nothing about it. I, I think this one is a big deal uh, for a few reasons, actually. I mean, if you want to just get right into it at this point. Yes. Well, Pokemon Sword and Shield is going to be the first main series game to be featured on a home console, uh, which would be the Nintendo Switch. Now we've had other Pokemon series games on consoles. We've had Pokemon Stadium uh, and everybody's favorite, which would be XD Gale of Darkness. But this would be the first uh, uh, games to actually be four series games. Yeah, it's the main kind of kind of a big kind of a big deal. I almost choked on my words there. Was such a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you got it out, and that's what's important. But um, I, you know, I've been waiting for the first home release since GameCube. Yeah. And uh, this is this is a massive game, so there's a lot of positives. There are some negatives, and we're gonna just jump into everything. And let's just start with uh, I think the thing that matters most in any Pokemon game, um, the 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 Pokemon themselves. Uh, and so far, I have to say, I think the Gala region has given us a pretty uh, actually a really really small look at what they have to offer, and. I will say I do enjoy that. What we've seen so far, I do kind of like the designs. Some are a little derpy, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm <laughs> I know we disagree on Surfetched. I think that that man is one handsome Chad bird. That's but, <laughs> fair enough. We can agree to disagree, you know. But um, I am actually kind of excited that they've managed to keep us in the dark on a lot of the Pokemon that we're going to be seeing in the game. But uh, as far as new new uh, Pokemon, with Sun and Moon, we were spoiled months in advance. We basically knew the entire decks. In this one, we're very much in the dark. We've only seen a few of the regional variants, uh, which I think look amazing, Obstagoon in particular. I know you like that one. That, yes, we can both agree. I like Obstagoon. That's like the big one that I like, actually, most of all, to be honest. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm a fan of the Pokemon, but it's not hard to make me a fan of Pokemon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fair statement, fair statement. Um, but for me, I would say that I, I like what we've seen so far. I want to see more. Um, I will say that as bad as some of them have come out looking, I will agree with you on uh, Duraludon, I believe is our new Steel Dragon buddy, right? Oh, you agree with me on that? I'm shocked. I, I, I do. Uh, I think it's really cool, his story of living in the mountains and just uh, having battles with Tyranitar. Yeah. But he does look a little goofy. Like, if you saw that... <laughs> He looks like a bedpan to me. I'm telling you, he's the bedpan Pokemon, and that's why they battle. Anyway, no, go ahead. Please don't let me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and okay, this is lesser, um, I would say lesser uh, of importance for the Pokemon franchise is having stories in their games. Um, I'm not trying to throw shade. It's just, I, I think that since we've had black and white, We've seen just a complete step down in giving us a strong story in the games. Um, Sun and Moon, I think, were okay there. Um, X and Y had no story whatsoever. Um, so this game, so far from what we've seen in the story, it looks like there's a lot of potential here for something great. Um, this is definitely, it, it's brought us back to the gym challenges, but it's not the same way as what we've seen in previous games. Uh, it seems like we're actually going in and, and partaking in these like sports stadiums. And unlike uh, previous games where you go to fight the Elite Four and become the champion, it seems like you're going in and you're competing in a big tournament to see who's the best. Which, kind of, that that that's like how we saw it originally in the Indigo League anime. No, yeah, for sure. I like the aspect that it seems like a spectacle 
You know what I mean? Um, I, I kind of wish they went to the route of uh, Kanto when the gyms had more like aesthetic. So, you know, how there's a certain theme like grass. I wish it would look more like a grassy thing instead of like a soccer field. But um, I can appreciate the fact that they put like an audience there. Um, I think that's pretty hype. Um, so, I, I, you know, it's a, it's a bittersweet thing with me. You know, like there's stuff I would like, but I appreciate what they've done. So Now, so the... The one thing I think that you will like, LAG, is the rivals that we've seen so far. Um, what, what are your thoughts so far before I give mine? Um, they're not so bad. Um, I'm very picky with rivals, so that it's a biased answer for me. Like, Silver is my favorite rival, for the most part. You know, he's definitely top three. Um, but I, I have, uh, there's optimism I have with them. I would like to see what they do with them, and I think they're going to be... A little bit better than uh, X and Y, because X and Y, I don't think they're even rivals at that point, and uh, better than how. So, hopefully yeah, I, we get something good with them. I, I think that the rivals we've seen so far, maybe this is Game Freak showing that they kind of learned from the previous rivals, because um, we've seen Hop, Marnie, and uh, Bede, and I think I'm saying his name correctly. I think so. They... They seem to match each of the rival packs that we've kind of seen while giving us a really nice cast of characters, um, which is something I think that they tried to do in X and Y. Yeah. But given given how childish those games were, um, and, and by that I mean kind of they, they were meant for a younger audience, that cast of characters were kind of immature. They, they, they just talked a lot about what they wanted to do and they didn't really do anything. <laughs> yeah, pretty so. much. Um, in this one here, we have three rivals, so it reminds me more of Black and White with Sharon and Bianca, and, uh, and kind of being a rival too, while also being the, uh, leader of the, uh, or, or the, uh, figurehead of the evil team, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. In this, in this game, we have the rare, the very friendly rival who really does seem like he is a copy-paste of how from Sun and Moon. <laughs> Um, so if you like the friendly rivals, he is there. Um, if you like the uh, if you like the mysterious or rather the uh, cool, uh, calm, collected rival, uh, you have that in Marnie. And if you want the jerk kind of talks down to you like you're absolutely nothing, then you have Pene. And I think <laughs> I think that that's kind of cool. Now I could be wrong there. I'm just going by. Kind of the artwork we've seen for these characters and some of the character views we've seen so far there is so much potential with this cast of characters um chairman rose his assistant um i i think that there's something very special here but i also think that uh i was very excited for x and y and that game taught <laughs> that game taught me the game freak is full of disappointments <laughs> Oh, for sure, man. It was like, it was, X and Y was a total gimmick. It was the, it was also a big deal. It was the first time it was, it was all 3D sprites, 3D everything. Um, uh, it just, it was very beautiful the way it looked, you know, and uh, Mega Evolutions. That was another big thing, you know, yes. so it, it, it breathed new life into the series. So. Well, no, absolutely. And you know what, speaking of gimmicks, let's get into the gameplay of uh, Sword and Shield with the latest gimmick, uh, Gigantamaxing and Dynamaxing. Um, I will say this, it looks like Pokemon Megazords. It looks like they, we, we, we wanted more Mega Evolutions and they just said, you know what? Everybody gets a Megazord. You got a Caterpie, the Megazord that Caterpie. Bug it, go for it. Um, it does seem like a definite downgrade from the visual aspect of Mega Evolutions, um, but I do like the fact that this feature is something that every Pokemon can use. Gigantamaxing does seem a little bit unique where the Pokemon's form changes a bit. That does seem like it's excluded for particular Pokemon, but everybody can participate in the new feature. You don't need, like, I, I will say this, in X and Y, I felt compelled to use a Mega Evolution on my team. I don't yeah. like the feeling of that, um, and I think that's why these games are definitely not that bad with their gimmick. Although it is goofy as all hell. I mean, 
the the mega evolution was like the only gimmick i kind of got behind i didn't really care about the the norelium you don't you don't like triple inverse battles i mean hit or miss with me <laughs> whatever just like one of my rotation well. battles crow <laughs> <laughs> but just the gimmick is kind of just lost on me right now but i can appreciate this i'll i'll, I'll bring up a positive how about this um, I do like the fact that the multiplayer missions revolve around, like, the Dynamax spots and whatnot. Um, I hope they implement it a little better. For example, it's not just running to, like, a red spot and encountering something. I hope, like, there's a town you gotta go to, and, like, one of them's being, like, a menace, and you gotta stop it with a team, like, an online team. But regardless, I just like the fact that you can, like, those are missions that you can do multiplayer-wise. So I can appreciate that. Now, a couple of the other smaller gameplay uh, changes. We seem to have an upgrade to Pokemon Ami, uh, which would be the Pokemon Camp feature. I think that that's a nice little upgrade. I, you know, I'm kind of on the fence. It's, Pokemon Ami was something where I used it uh, just to get the bonuses, and then I just ignored it, and it became really annoying to see. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm hoping the camp changes that. The, uh, the, the curry system... I, I have no clue why they spent so much time and effort on the curry system in this game. But uh, it, it's a little RPG element, and uh, as far as an RPG goes, I, I, I don't mind seeing that in the Pokemon game. Uh, it seems like just a cool little mini side thing to, 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 to do and collect. Um, but the final thing would be the missions that you can send your uh, Pokemon on the PC to go do. Uh, you can sign up, do little jobs. This, uh, I'm hit or miss on. It reminds me a lot of uh, World of Warcraft uh, Garrison Table, where you basically just logged in, you sent your little team out on a mission, you got your awards, you logged out. Um, I, I Obviously, I don't think that's what people would do. It's just, it's a little bit not as interactive with your team from what I've seen so far. And uh, hopefully in the future they'll improve on that. Now, speaking of that, uh, some of the things that we've seen, some of the things that we like, uh, version exclusives of uh, Pokemon, version exclusives of the gyms, which is a major change in the uh, Pokemon main series games. We've always had uh, version exclusive Pokemon, you know, that vary, but in these games we'll actually have different gyms altogether. Uh, in Shield, you'll get the uh, Ghost-type gym. In Sword, you'll get the Fighting-type gym. Really cool addition that they've made there. Now, one thing that you pointed out, AG, is the cost of these games. And I <laughs> I think that you're right, so go ahead and take it away. Um, I would just like to say, first off, I appreciate the version exclusives to an extent to make it a reason to actually have more thought to put more thought and to have like more of a choice to pick one of these games so but that being said uh these games are 60 dollars a pop and say like because i don't know if it's gonna matter that much the difference is however if you want to get the full experience of both worlds you got to dish out 120 dollars um and some people that will say oh you've done you know like i bought sun and moon however sun and moon cost 30 dollars a piece them together as a double pack cost the price of one of these games and they offer better promotions um they're not really doing that for this game you know there, there is no promotions like being offered that much and uh even if you get a bonus included with it it's just like a dynamax code so and 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 12 quick balls yeah 12 quick <laughs> balls and that's 120 dollars worth of real dollars so i don't <laughs> You know, well, so each of those digital quick balls was worth about ten. Ten whole dollars, <laughs> three whole pounds, like so. No, like okay, I completely agree. There, the games are definitely rising up in cost. So, in the past, you could easily buy, you know, well, you know, when we were kids. It wasn't too easy to get your parents to buy you Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue, but <laughs> you know, you, you got gold and silver, and then you got crystal. You got ruby sapphire and then you just got emerald and you got fire red and you got leaf green it wasn't that much right and they definitely jumped up a lot in cost a lot of that's going on to the home console um now 
there are a lot of controversies surrounding the game with the uh, National Pokedex, uh, talking about not really improving the animations too much. Uh, I hear all of those, right? Um, now, does that mean that the game is not going to be worth the price tag? That's what I want to know, right? Yeah. It's. I will say this, if they actually produced a $60 game, then I am not going to fault them for making version exclusives. Or sorry, or version version differences, right? I think it's very scummy that, you know, you, you produce two $40 games, so yeah, they're $80 altogether. But at the end of the day, both of those games were maybe $40, and there was really no reason to buy two. There's really no reason to do it. Yeah exactly there's no real differences apart to them the only reason that, like because what is it in sun and moon the minor difference is if you play one during the day it's actually day and you play one during the day it's nighttime yeah i so. mean yeah other, other than the uh legendaries being different and, yeah. and that sort of thing um yeah. but you, you know you're you're absolutely correct and this is the thing i would rather they do it where we actually have a reason for version exclusives with your version differences yeah. um so there's a reason to have two different versions i'm okay with that as long as there's a reason for it it seems like they are doing that in this game here but i will be very pissed off if we basically have x and y 2.0 where we basically get a game where it's very stripped down very lackluster the whole the whole big selling point was just moving on to the home console and have a more powerful engine and we don't really get a good story we, we that sort of thing that will annoy me and then on top of that they slapped us in the face and charged us 60 dollars for one game and give us no bonus if we bought both you know that that's the sort of thing that would actually upset me yeah. i will say this i i'm not okay with the price tag and i think that you know a lot of people should <laughs> should chill out uh decide really quick which which version you want the most um don't feel pressured to buy both games and really wait and see i'll be buying the dual pack but that's only because i'm uh buying one for my brother you know no, yeah, for sure i think most people should take a chill on buying the dual pack just buy a single game see if it's actually worth it and then if you really love the game if you really had a lot of fun then you have reason to replay it in a new version. You know, spend the price tag, play it with the new version, play it with all the differences, and have just as much fun the second time. No, yeah, I, I agree. Totally agree. Um, and I also think, too, if they're going to sh- divvy up the price, I their multiplayer better not drop. It better be fought. It better work. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's all oh, I'm saying. Oh, yes. I mean, you know, they've, they've done really good things with their multiplayer in the past. No, exactly, um, and this is, they're being very ambitious with this one, because you can yes. roam the world with your friends. So and I'm they, just, they showed that, yeah, uh, open world roaming. Uh, so if I'm playing the game with you, AG, I will yeah. see you on the screen and challenge you to Pokemon battles and kick your ass. No, for sure, but you got Top Dollar to deal with when he gets on, so... <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Top uh, Dollar's more of a fanatic than I am, so... Oh, man, it's going to be so much fun. Hopefully we can get BP in, involved. I, I, we gotta we gotta get him a switch we gotta think of something i don't know <laughs> yeah, we'll figure it out all right yeah. um well i don't have anything more to add obviously um the these games are are huge they are massive i am checking youtube checking all the feeds going on to reddit uh <laughs> going on to 4chan even just yeah, to Crow's figure out much yeah he's the looker right now you know the detective looker he's just finding <laughs> Into like all, he's everywhere in this game. Trust me. I'm like DMing them all over Twitter. Hey, did you hear Glare and Pony Toss a yeah. psychic type? Yeah. <laughs> I love the response there. No, no. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, you pretty much break most of the news for me, anyway. So, um, uh, is there anything I, well, you specifically hope to see from this game? By the way. Um. No. I. I will say this. The only thing that I really want to see, not very specific, is just. I, I am okay with out the national decks. I am okay with... Um, I, I'm not really okay with the animation thing. I do think that they need to, to, to actually uh, do things like when your Charizard uses flamethrower, the flame actually comes out of its mouth. You know, stuff like that needs to happen, you know? Especially for 60 bucks. Especially for 60 bucks. Especially yeah. if you're going to take Pokemon out. 
I think you can polish these games up, um, but I am willing to kind of just say, okay, fine, take a pass, as long as you deliver a good story. That that's I, I want something here that's actually captivating because they have so much here that works, right? Um, they haven't been uh, giving out a bunch of information on the games. We've had very minor spoilers and leaks. Uh, we, we have very interesting rivals and we have a cast that looks captivating. And look, man, it, it's, you know, the only thing Game Freak can do at this point is snatch uh, defeat from the jaws of victory. Hey, fair enough. You know, like I said, I've been excited for the first like home console release of Pokemon. I played like I think every Pokemon game. So um, even with my gripes and complaints and disbeliefs or whatever, what have you, I'm still going to get this game. I'm I, I'm very optimistic. I hope they can do good things with it. I hope they could deliver. Um, and the only thing I would really want from them is to give Gen 2 some love. It's my favorite Gen, you know, like they missed an opportunity. <laughs> They missed an opportunity with Sun and Moon because you literally had like an alligator, a volcano, and a tree, you know, and they didn't do anything with Gen 2. So hopefully they, <laughs> it gets a little bit of love. That's all I want. But all that's right. my thoughts. So. Okay, well, uh, please let us know in the comments section uh, what your thoughts are on these games, um, what you want to see, what you don't want to see, uh, if you're excited or if you're not excited. Uh, I think that these games are really going to change a lot of things for Pokemon. Um, I could be wrong. Uh, they could wind up being massive flops like X and Y. Um, but uh, the final thing I will say is I, I still see people talking about the national uh, decks. Um, and I, I know you feel the same way, AG. Uh, when I played black and white, there was a period, I want to say it was at least four months, in which you could only use the Unova Pokemon. Mm -hmm. And my gosh we survived that i i guarantee you we can survive this yeah i, I have no doubt they're gonna incorporate like bringing over your pokemon or like for all we know they can update they'll send an update one day and then the national decks will be in there anything you know the, they'll make up for it somehow in that aspect however like i just hope they make the elements fun i hope they bring a, a good experience all that and, and stuff and, and I'll be very clear, guys, if, if, if in this game we're only allowed to use Wachog and Leopard and Clink Clang and all the other wonderful Unovan designs, uh, <laughs> then, then I will fully support boycotting these games. <laughs> but until then, I don't want to hear it from any of you. Yeah, so. All right, man. That, uh, that was good. Thank you for having me, Crow. Appreciate it. Oh, AG, you're part of the channel. Yeah, but still, <laughs> <laughs> we we've been we've been arguing over Surfetched a lot. So, <laughs> like, oh man, like if you don't start showing that that birdie some respect, I will follow you in the game and troll you like crazy. Hey, if you want that ponytail from me, even though like you could get it from Dean, but like if you want See, that ponytail from me, I, I, I'd offer the Surfetch for the ponytail. I'm sure you're just going there, like I don't want that really? shit. <laughs> so. Not aware, I give you one anyway. So, all right, guys, it's been fun. 